In this presentation, we're going to add an insurance payment going through our bank feeds. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here is our Get Great Guitars file. Let's open up our reports on the left hand side. We're going to start by opening up that balance sheet report. We're going to be. Then we'll change the dates up top. Let's go from uh, January 2, 12, 31, 2, 0. Run that report. Right click on the tab up top. Duplicate the tab up top. Go back to the tab to the left. Open the reports on the tab to the left. Then we're going to be opening up the P&L profit and loss income statement. Let's run this one just for the current month that we are working in. That one being April. So we're going to be starting off with 040120 to 04320 and run that report. Then go back up top. We're going to right click on the tab up top, duplicate that tab. There's our two reports that will be on the right. Let's go back to the tab to the left, go into the banking section where we will be continuing on with our bank feeds. I'm going to close the old hamburger to get it out of the way. And we're going to be focusing in on this insurance one this time. So this is the insurance. We paid 11000 for the insurance. Now that's when it cleared, it was at 11000 Now we're going to imagine that we paid this for like a year's time period. So just uh, note that if you're using the bank feeds, you can still kind of think about this one is one where you might say, hey, maybe I should deviate from a cash basis or maybe I shouldn't deviate from a cash basis, whatever you want to do here. But you still could put this on an accrual basis. Why would you want to do that? Just realize that the 11000 if you put it on the books for this month, the current month, and you paid for a year's worth of insurance and you do a comparison from this month to another month on a P&L report, that uh, the month that you paid for the insurance will result in the net income being a lot smaller income expenses higher net income smaller for that month and it's not really fair of course because this insurance that you're paying for is a prepayment something you're paying for use in the future so on an accrual basis what you would do is you put it on the books as a prepaid asset and then you would do adjusting journal entries so this is one, even if you're using bank feeds, you might like anytime you have a prepayment like that, it could be that you pay like a 12 months of rent early or something like that. Or you pay for services like uh, like uh, online uh, subscriptions possibly or something like that where you pay for them all one year's worth of service up at front. Insurance is just the most common example. You may want to ask if, if you have a CPA firm or an accounting firm at the end of the year, you may ask them, hey, uh, you know, what should I do with this? I, I could either put this, I can tell my bank feeds to always put this to insurance expense. That's what I would think, even though it's paying for 12 months. But if you want me to put it to prepaid insurance, and then you want to make the adjustment at the end of the year to record the adjustment for the prepaid portion versus the amount that it's the expense, that's fine. I could do that too. Either way would be really easy to do in the bank feeds, in other words. So I'm on the bookkeeping side of things. I can either record this all as insurance expense and that would be on a cash basis or if I'm working with an adjusting entry department, either myself or someone else that's going to do adjusting entries, it would be easier to put it into prepaid insurance, an asset account, and then have someone either monthly or at the end of the year record any adjusting entries related to prepaid insurance at that point in time. So those are your two kind of methods that you could think about. In in the first month of operations, we put it into prepaid using an accrual system. Here, we're just going to put it into the expense so we can kind of see the difference between the two. Obviously, when we put this in in the prior, in February, I think, we, we had the same scenario pretending we're going to be paying this for a year, which would be including the month we're in now, April, and now we're paying it again. So keep that in mind we're, we're paying it twice which would be covering the same time period but what we're trying to get at is the fact that if you paid for the full thing in a year's time period and expensed it then it's going to have a different result from a timing perspective on the income statement as if you used an accrual method and allocated so we'll discuss that a little bit more when we get to the financial statements so i'm just going to put this then to insurance expense down here i'm going to copy the vendor and copy it down here safe insurance i already have it in the system because we did this in in february but you can add the vendor safe insurance and then again your choices are to put it into prepaid insurance or insurance expense if you put it in a prepaid you may have to add an account just make sure that the account name or the account over here that the type is prepaid insurance or i'm sorry other current asset it's another current current asset and then if you have an expense, you probably have an expense that QuickBooks gave you, which is something like insurance expense. 
So we have insurance. Is that right? Yes, insurance. Okay. And so we're going to add that and that's going to be it. And then again, it could save this as long as you do the same system, whether it goes to prepaid or insurance. Every time I pay it, I want to go to that same account. So it can save that account and I'm fine with that. So I'm going to say add that please. And uh, there we have it. Going back to the balance sheet, if we then close up the old hamburger and hold down control, scroll up just a bit, we're at the 125, which is where I like to be. And then we're going to go into the checking account and see if we can find that payment. So scrolling down to the checking account, the end of it. Here is the safe insurance right there on 4-5. And if it was for the 11,000, if we go into it, we're going to open up another uh, check. So, well, I mean, not a check, it's an expense, kind of like a check without the check number. That means it's going to be decreasing, of course, the checking account. The other side going to insurance, which is an expense type of account. Closing this back out, scrolling back up, and going back to our uh, data, back to our balance sheet. Now, you'll note that we also have up top prepaid insurance. And that's because when we did, we mirrored this data in February. When we put it in in February, we did the accrual thing. And the accrual thing looks like this you would put it on the books as a um, that expense as 11,000 on the books and then at the end of the month or you can do it at the end of the year if you just need it for taxes the accountant would then or the you know whoever's doing the adjusting entries allocate the amount of the insurance poly policy that has expired has been consumed decreasing it down in this case we put a year's worth of insurance decreased it by a month that was consumed bringing it down to the 10,000 only recording then a month worth of insurance rather than the whole 11 months. So in other words, if we go and see this on the profit and loss side of things, closing up the hamburger, just looking at April, the current month we are in, if we go down to insurance, it, well, let's refresh it. It's not fresh. There we go. Now, if we go down to insurance expense, we have that 11,000, the full 11,000 there. So again, that, that 11,000 is going to distort if I want to compare uh, April to some other month. For example, let's run this report from 010120 to 4320 and run that report. Then I'm going to go back up top and change the totals to months so we can see the, the months and run that report. And then if we go down to the insurance down here, you'll note that in the month of February, we did the accrual thing which means we put it on the books as an asset and then made an adjustment only recording one month worth, even though we paid for 11 months in that method, right? And that would mean 11,000 divided by 12. That means one month worth. Whereas here we put the whole 11,000 on the books. And that means you'd have a situation, if you did that, you'd have a situation kind of like this. There's nothing in the, there would be nothing in, in like March here. There'd be nothing in uh, May for insurance. Because, and that's not really accurate because you did consume insurance in May, right? We consumed the coverage in May, even though we paid for it in April. So on an accrual ba basis, we would be recording this when we consumed it. On a cash basis, we would just record it in April because that's when we paid uh, for it. So that's kind of the difference between the cash basis and accrual basis. Again, if you use bank feeds, you can, you, you can choose either method, but you just want to work with whoever's going to be doing the adjusting process if you're dependent on them to help you to, to do an adjusting process for a kind of a more of an accrual method uh, with it. If you're working with a CPA firm or something or a tax preparer firm that's willing to do kind of those adjustments for you yearly or monthly, then you can set up a system with them and the bank feeds fit into either system quite well.